John, you're back again with a nice new look. Look at this uh, professional studio looking thing. It's great these cameras, what you can do, isn't it? As it is, I have to compete with the likes of you, mate. So that's why it's definitely. Well, I'm, in, I'm impressed, actually. You know, I've got you like 20, 30 years experience, but it's great. John, it's yeah. it's uh, that time of the uh, to catch up again. The weeks are rolling by. It's getting near Christmas. But we decided because of what we did last time, the last interview, there's that many people asking questions. Um, we decided to put another one out. This is for the sake of the audience. So um, off we go. We're not really sure where it's going to go, but a, a catch up chat. Because for the sake of the audience, John has been, well, he's, you're in touch with me daily, actually. The messages you send me, buddy, a lot of them go over my head because you watch, uh, you you seem to be a subfield specialist, I would say now, about this whole RV situation, whereas I've only learned about it only two, three years, I suppose, I've been doing it. But you're a great puzzle picker is what i would call it i do that a lot with geopolitical i can see things here and here how they're trying to manipulate it but you're really good at watching what's going on on the international basis as far as um countries going into bricks then you're talking about gold you're talking about rv you're talking about iraq all of these major players in the game so why don't we start off with a little bit of what you know what's been going on the last couple of weeks some poignant pieces of the puzzles that we can share with the audience sure well as always but it's a great great to be on with you i always enjoy our our banter and discourse it's always fun yeah. because, because we because like you said you know we've been doing this long enough that we can kind of you know bounce the pieces off and know how they fit i i always tell my audience i don't make the puzzle pieces i just know i i just understand how they fit you yeah. know and it, it's just a mentality it's it's just a mindset being able to see it a certain way and when it's just like anybody else has talents with math or science when you get it you get it um so as i look um david at the last couple of weeks since our last discourse there's been some interesting developments in iraq that really make a, a concerted effort to push for the tax reforms on the border tax and tariffs the reforms that they need to do uh they're making a concerted effort to remove the corruption with the money laundering because you again you, to refresh the audience's memory, the government, not unlike our deep state U.S. government or your corrupt government in Spain, you know, you were you were talking about what happened with Portugal a few weeks ago when you were there. The yeah, whole yeah. Of the government being arrested, which is pretty fascinating because the, the mainstream never covers that. What a, don't know. God forbid. Um, <laughs> so you, you're seeing a lot of parallels, David, in in these respective countries. So. My point being is that Iraq's government is comprised right now of corrupt Iranian proxy people. So they're not on the side of the Iraqi people. That is subject to change. What you have is, again, a parallel. You have parallel finances. You have parallel information in the media. And you have parallel economies. And you're seeing this shift, this juxtaposition from the old system to the new. Um, as you know, our, our friend, Mr. Putin, uh, the good one, um, is basically unilaterally said the SWIFT system is done. It's discredited. Uh, all the the U.S. banks and their old shenanigans. Their that system is over. <clears throat> so I, I see Iraq being forced by China and Russia secretly to make these moves because it's not in their in their current government. It's not in their interest to let this happen because they've held the the chains to the gravy train for so long. But now they're being forced to subjugate and let that go. And you're seeing that resting of corruption slowly but surely weaning away from the whole of, of the globe. And so, you know, you had yesterday, I don't know if you saw uh, Putin met with uh, UAE, then he flew over to Saudi Arabia. That's all bricks. So the bricks is just, you know, no pun intended, building their bricks and getting their setup for, for early 2024. So I really see January 1 onwards everything that we've been waiting for and anticipating beginning to converge and, and coming into the natural. Yeah, I can see it too. But you know what we should do is we should talk about why Iraq is in this situation. Obviously, the audience is aware of the, the invasion and the war that was all created. <laughs> but it's the ongoing um, collateral damage after that because Saddam had the country and at least an organized mess. But after the invasion happened, it, they all of these different fractions veered off from the original government, and they all started bickering and fighting with each other. So it's been a, a mess since then. Now, the American influence, what well, was also the Brits as well, I can't just be one-sided. Their interest sure. was, okay, 
we're gonna we're gonna say Saddam's a bad boy. He's got mass of, weapons of mass destruction. And remember, there was never any found. So as the coalition forces went into Iraq, they basically stripped all of the raw materials. They're interested in the oil. Um, they probably got gold there as well, I would imagine. And oh, yeah. since that period, the the coalition forces need a war because they all make billions of dollars in a, a conflict situation because not only are they selling all the armaments they're selling into the government that they're using the weapons shells and ammunition and all the other stuff that goes with it but it's the infrastructure contracts to rebuild the country after it's been torn apart to rebuild it back again mm -hmm. so the pipelines and the infrastructure such as water electricity sewage um these are all put together by People like, I know Donald Rumsfeld, for example, was a major shareholder and one of the biggest conglomerates that was out there that were doing all of the repair work. So yeah. when did that happen? That was probably, what year was that? Was it, oh, I can't remember what year it was they it was, first went in. I think it was 01 to 02. If I yeah, remember. it was about early 2000. Mm -hmm. So think about it. For 20 years, the deep state cabal has been picking their, their pockets of the Iraqi people and all of the, the raw materials they have, specifically the oil. Incidentally, here's another little geopolitical, the oil fires that you saw that were burning um, in Iraq were never started by um, these people. That was an actual inside job to get those done. It was just US special forces were sent in to blow those oil wells um, just to get, again, more people. That was the Kuwait um, thing as well when they first started that. Mm -hmm. So... Right. Now, now here we are 25, 25 years later, more or less. Let's call it 25 years. Um, we've got this situation where we've got a huge country which has been stripped apart, put back together, patched together, and now the government is trying to figure out, okay, we don't want these people with us anymore. They've started signing contracts with um, more Arab-based countries. We know that the U.S. dollar is not being used in any of the oil transactions. Again, mainstream media are not talking about that. So Iraq is in a really strong position. Right. I think we should also reiterate, John, if we go back to what happened with Kuwait after that, when they revalued their currency, they revalued it overnight. Yep. The day before, they said, no, we're not doing that. Don't be crazy. But what happened? Let's go back and talk about that little incident again. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I'm glad you brought that up, David, because it's it ties in nicely to your discussion. It's it's historical replication once again. Things just continue to repeat. The question is, do we learn our lesson as as humans through the process? You know, so the Kuwaiti situation was very similar to Iraq in the aspect that uh, you know Kuwait is rich in oil, which like a lot of the Arab countries, that's understood. But they had a lot of other materials as well. We'll touch on that in a minute in, in respect to Iraq. Uh, but you had a situation where there was a lot of, you know, created chaos and panic, dramatic, dramatized, if you will. Uh, and they told the public basically at that point, um, I had a friend who um, passed away about a year and a half ago. Her father had invested in the Kuwait in our, so that's how I was able to attain kind of the information I'm going to share from a personal mm -hmm. experience. And she indicated to me that her dad had quite a bit of this currency. And what they did back then is they told people that the oil fields were blown up and the Shah had been killed. And it was, it was a money grab. It was a currency grab to get everybody to kind of give up and say, it's never going to happen. We're just going to sell it and dump it and, and walk away. And then within, I think, a day or two later, the brokers called the client and said, okay, it's ready for exchange. Yeah. And you're going to see that exact same thing more or less happen here. You're going to see Israel is going to wake up, I believe, sometime in January. And they've been these plans, as you know, are all premeditated in the works for quite some time. So today's parallel, mate, will be that You'll see Israel do a secret bombing on the nuclear sites of Iran. Iran's going to run to the U.S. for safety along with Syria. That'll be what Tim Clement talked about, the great surrender we've discussed before as a refresher. And you're going to see a lot of people um, who will get shaken out of the dinar and say, oh, no, it's never going to happen. I'm going to give up and cash out while I can and cut my losses. And then within days to weeks, it's going to happen because after January 1st, as you know, Iraq has adamantly said no dollars in or out of the country, yeah. just like the narrative with a lot of other countries you just mentioned. So again, the yeah. parallels. That being said, if you're not getting dollars coming in, if they can't live off the drug of the deep state dollar, they're only going to be able to live on the dinar for days to weeks at a time. They're going to have to be forced to give it purchasing power. And they did say, I put this on one of my uh, weekly wrap-ups, I don't know if you saw it, 
that they have stated in articles on my Telegram channel that they are going back to 1940s pricing. So yeah. I researched. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just saying yes. I remember that because this is the other thing is when the the funds do get um, revalued, they are going to have to reset everything up. You know, you need to have a basis. For example, it's not going to be like Nazi Germany <laughs> where a wheelbarrow full of L right. local cash money is not going to be worthless they they want to rebuild the country they're tired of foreigners stripping it all that they don't want the coca-cola and the mcdonald's anymore they want to have their own country back and run their own government yeah. incidentally john some of the other things that are tying <laughs> into what you're talking about um you'll know about this again um but i'll mention it the president of turkey erdogan or erdogan or erdogan um he's now issued says listen Nitinahu is a war criminal. He will be held for crimes against humanity. He's made it very obvious where he stands. Uh, so that's another indicator that we are getting pushed into this situation where there's going to have to be a, a final showdown, more or less, of who's going to put their hands up and say, okay, guys, I've had enough. Or is it going to get worse, like you say, bringing in Syria, bringing in Iran? Now, if... Um, Another one that was funny was Turkey was they were, they were threatening them back. Israel were threatening Turkey, saying, "Listen, don't mess with Israel. We've got nuclear weapons." And Turkey said, "Listen, we could get hold of one of them in twenty minutes." You know, our yeah. mates Pakistan, they're nuclear capable. They're very good um, pals with Turkey. They could certainly lend them some, or at least display, say, "Look, we'll we'll give you some." And then Erdogan's answer back to Netanyahu was, "You're a very small country. It would take us ten minutes." Yeah, Turkey is quite a, a large country. So everybody is now more or less saying, hey, we don't want to have anything to do. We don't like the politics of what you're doing. There's only the last few cabal-ridden giants, such as the UK and the USA, that are now standing shoulder to shoulder with this psychiatry, this psycho psychopath, Nahu. So again, ties into biblical predictions, which I know that you're very learned about. So the whole basis of holding on to the Iraqi dinar and waiting for things to settle down, waiting for them to clear out the last of the American influences, waiting for their economy to be redriven so they can rebuild uh, and get back to where they were. I mean, pre-Saddam days in the 50s, it was all of those countries, Iran, there was, there was ski resorts and women were walking around in, in short sleeve shirts. And if you look at the how these Middle Eastern countries used to be, without this huge influx influence of um of extremism there were interesting places welcoming the tourists welcoming the strangers it's very interesting times we're living in that we're going through if we could you know there'll be many people jealous of us i can imagine our grandkids saying tell us another story about what happened in the 2020s <laughs> exactly well that's the whole point of this mate is is that we have an opportunity to be legends in our respective families because yeah. One of two narratives is going to happen, right? Decades down the road, our, you know, my future kids, your, your future grandkids, et cetera, are going to say, you know, grandpa, dad, what did you do during this historic time? And you have one of two answers. I was part of the effectuation of the change to get the message out and to help God's people, or I sat on my butt and did absolutely nothing. And, you know, we, we were struggling because of it. Going back to what you just said, David, a minute ago, I think there's important, um, demarcation or note to put on what you just said that's one of the reasons saddam was killed because he wouldn't go along with the central yeah. bank he's only one of two to go against it ironically now 40 plus years later we're in the same spot but now globally because of bricks and other things you you have a major concerted effort to do exactly what he was already standing up bravely to go against sudani the current prime minister is being the one that's picked to do this he's even said on in the gazette that he would you know, put his life on the line for this to happen. And, and we kind of knew in the community when, when that person as a prime minister stood up to do that, that this was, you know, going to be the time and position to happen. Another interesting point, David, that I don't think many people know, you probably do, but you and I have always talked before, and, and I talked to my audience about this, that each respective country will be on a level playing field based on what they have, assets in the ground. Well, yeah. a prime example with Iraq is, did you know that they are the largest single producer of phosphorus in the world? I didn't so know that. You, and you can't get phosphorus, you're getting it from Iraq. Yeah, really? Is that mm -hmm. what, I mean, they, 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 that's a, a massive, a massive commodity that is traded and needed in industries and all around right. the world. Phosphorus, I mean, from a match, an old match head, phosphorus, you know, fireworks, yeah. anything. Well, 
I, even the arms industry, they all need it. Minerals that you consume yeah. as well. Um, it, here's one that's interesting. This just came out today on my news feed. Iraq and four Arab countries have more than 1 million tons of gold reserves. So they're just stacking. So everybody thinks of them as oil, but they're so much deeper than that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's back up because sure. what I'm doing is I've got to, I keep looking over here because I've got a list of points that I want sure. to clarify because people are saying, well, why is this all happening? You've got to understand that these countries such as Iraq, who are very oil rich, this actually goes back to Saddam. And this is a, a actual factual history point, which is where the whole thing sets up. Back in the 60s, Saddam was the bodyguard chauffeur for the president before. Now, I should have written his name down, but I haven't. So you can Google all this if you want, or duck, duck, go in. And actually, Saddam was a CIA operative. He worked for the CIA, and his mission was to kill this president because the Americans wanted, and they promised him he would be getting a position of power so they could get in. So what happened was there was an attempt on this president's life, and they riddled his car with machine gun bullets, but the lucky guy survived and Saddam fled and was given sanctuary and asylum in Syria. Eventually, the CIA rejigged the plan, tried again, and they were successful and they killed the president. They then brought Saddam back and he was made head of um, head of a department. I want to say uh, home defense or something like that, or the defense of the nation. And of course, the guy that was president, Saddam, had him done away with, and then he got into a position of power. Now, that all of that deal was originally set up to manipulate the Saudis into agreeing to do exclusive oil deals or, let's say, preferential oil deals with the USA, and they were going to do it all in US dollars. So all of these countries have been trading the US petrodollar since at least the 1950s, at least. And that has been a massive, massive moneymaker for the USA because all the oil brokers, biggest ones in the world, let's just take Singapore, every single barrel of oil that is traded on the market is done in US dollars. And there's commissions to be made on all of that. 100 million barrels of oil, one penny goes back to whoever. So now all of these countries have now realized we're not going to use the dollar anymore. This is what's been going on. But they're going to set up their own currencies and the US petrodollar, this cabal funds, are literally on the last days because they've done deals to have gold-backed assets, which they have. Other countries, which we'll talk about, such as Zimbabwe, Vietnam, they all have vast mineral reserves and wealth beyond you can even push in numbers into a calculator. But what's been going on, they've all been stripped and ripped off by this global team of elites that run these countries by um the last 60 50 60 years this is all coming to an end now people mm -hmm. have woken up so you've got to know the backstory again for the audience to understand where we are now and why we talk about these countries that are going to stand up finally out of their out of their chair that they've been strapped in on their own two feet and start building their own economies but of course they need to have their valuation of their of their currency needs to be respected on the worldwide market. And we'll talk about Zimbabwe, for example, John. I mean, go into some of the, the resources that this country has that people don't know. I mean, it's incredible. There, there, I've said it before on, on shows with you and, and, and Nick before and other channels. Zimbabwe, far and away, if you took collectively all the wealth of the world, Zimbabwe could pretty much, much eat everybody's lunch by themselves. They have the most amount of gold of anybody. They have diamonds, uh, ruby, sapphires. Their land is, is pregnant with natural resources, waterfalls, they, they, you know, coffee beans because it's a lush climate. Uh, it's just they have been riddled under the same uh, plague of corruption, just like here in the U.S., just like, you know, with the EU. Uh, and just quickly to backtrack a minute, uh, David, to your point before you finish with Zimbabwe is, you know, the U.S. dollar isn't the only one that's going to take the hit. You, you oh, know, the EU is going to take it in the shorts. I mean, every absolutely. time I've traveled overseas, I've talked to different Europeans, especially like in Italy, and they still some of them still use the lira uh, along with the EU. And they would prefer to use that primarily because they get a better exchange rate out of country than they do currently with the EU. They're, they really lose that value, as you know, personally living in Spain. But, uh, you know, Zimbabwe is basically the breadbasket to the world. Um, I don't think most, I mean, some people do, but I think most by and large people do not understand or greatly underestimate how wealthy Zimbabwe is and how they literally can carry 
the world and in, in specific the BRICS all by themselves if they wanted. That's why you know all these countries are trying to get in there just like Iraq. And you know just again to clean up with Iraq, um, they they actually are trying to make Baghdad the capital. They want it to be one of the largest buildings in the world. So they're trying to compete with Dubai. Iraq is being slated to be the next Dubai 2.0 and have that wealth period. That's why they have a three-year budget. I don't know if everybody knows that, but they have a three-year budget. And I'll tell you why, because as I've said before, this wealth transfer is not a tsunami. It's not a one-shot deal, okay? It's, it's in waves. So, you know, specifically, God's people will be able to take advantage of those dips as things happen, you know, with the dinar, with the dong, with the zim, with the rupee, and yes, the boulevard, everybody, you know, goes on and on, harps about that currency. Yes, Venezuela is part of it. They will happen. You guys can stop asking about that. To yeah. all 290 countries and provinces, there's a lot of Christians, just like there's a lot of people in the world, 99% roughly, that don't know anything about what we're talking about, right? This is a finite thing. So, you know, just like Zimbabwe, um, if you miss these first few waves, those who don't know anything about it, not a problem. There'll, there'll be opportunities to come up because it takes time for this wave to circulate. So with Iraq, they have a three-year budget primarily because they're going to get three years of grace before Iran comes back in and infiltrates that country again. So the Iraqi people are probably preparing to either do like what we're doing in America, get to the safe havens, buy land you know, get their own provinces set up or flee the country and get uh, asylum somewhere else, um, you know, for those who whatever just, you know, want to move or have that proclivity. But uh, yeah, Zimbabwe is is hugely primed for success uh, as this thing starts to roll out because of the amount of gold and other things that they have. Yeah, it, and it, what, is, what is strange is if you look at any country that has vast um, reserves of petroleum, Venezuela is a great example. It's never had a government that hasn't been interfered with. You know what? Out of all the countries in South America, John, I think Colombia, and there was one next door to it. I looked at a map of all it, it like Chile, Nicaragua, uh, Honduras, um, Panama, El Salvador, El Salvador. All of these countries have had their elections interfered with by CIA interference because. The petrodollar is so important to them, and they've been interfering and manipulating these governments. Most people will remember the whole Noriega situation. They'll also remember the Contras and all the North and Reagan, all of those days. This was all, you know, they were saying, oh, we don't, we want to get rid of this communist um, possibility, these communist governments. But Venezuela, the amount of oil they have, and look who's been running the country for years. You know, it was Chavez before. What's I forget the guy's name there now. The people are living in poverty. Yeah. People are living in poverty, um, and even even very influential people like the the previous king of Spain was always in he was he was in Venezuela a lot. He was good pals with them. Uh, it was kind of a joke, you know, this dictatorship. Why is the king of Spain going out there, Juan Carlos? So the countries that have had all this for Zimbabwe, Mugabe, you know, look at the countries in Africa. You know, you're talking about Nigeria, Angola, all troubled with um, civil war mass bloodshed and it's all because people are trying to take over and, and run the countries and a lot of the fingers in those pies i keep saying the cia but it's it's the brits and the french as well they've all had it they're, they're, even the portuguese with countries like angola they've all had their fingers in the pies and now the chef is angry and he's smacking them with a great big stick take your fingers out the pies these countries are gonna rebalance and restabilize and i would imagine a lot of the economic restability is going to attract a lot of the people that left back there because let's look at some of the the communities spread out around the world look at let's go to miami for example in havana you got mm. little havana and these people are forced out of the countries by these dictators but they live in other countries and all they do is talk about their old countries you know they all right. they would probably a lot of them would at least visit but i'm sure a lot of people would go back if their economies were safe booming and they had the money to do it. They'd say, hey, I miss I miss my home country. I miss my mom's kitchen, you know? Yeah, well, that's what, you know, holy, that's a whole separate subject, but that's Nasara Jasara in effect right there. That's going to remove the banker wars, bring peace and prosperity so that you have a right sizing of countries because everybody does want to live <clears throat> where they're from. I get that. You know, everybody wants to go home again, return to the center. Going back quickly, uh, David, to Zimbabwe, since you were talking about corruption yeah. of leadership, Nelson Chamisa, we've talked about that. 
Yeah. I don't know why most people aren't talking about it. I don't know if they don't know about it or they just don't, you know, they discount it. But um, he had the election stolen from him. Uh, but the Chinese good side, because I don't know if people know this, there's two sides in China. There's the CCP, which is being, you know, separated. And then anyway, they're, they're taking them apart anyway, slowly, aren't they? Right. And then you have the, you have the, the you know, the, the Republic part of China that uh, is separate from that. He's the, the good side of China already worked with Chamisa and wanted him to run because they know he can restore um, Zimbabwe to their true prosperity. So just like with, you know, President Trump here and, you know, uh, many other presidents around, like, you know, um, with Brazil, you know, how Lula kind of infiltrated and yeah. we're going to have, you know, th you know, the good guy come back into Brazil, right? Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro, um, yeah. There's a lot of names floating on my head right now. Yeah, you're doing um, well, actually. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm trying. It's a lot of information to try to retain. Uh, but <laughs> Bolsonaro will make a resurgence. So too will the replication, as we said, and these countries copy each other. You're going to see Chamisa take his rightful position over Mangawa, who's been corrupt for a long time. And he's publicly said, I'm going to restore all of the Zim bonds and dollars back to gold. Because once gold becomes the stabilizer for the world, like Q said, yes, gold will destroy the Fed, right? Then you can see how, how Zimbabwe is going to proliferate out into their true value. Same thing with Iraq. Same thing with Vietnam. Same thing with Venezuela. Venezuela, do you, I don't know if you remember, President Trump in his State of the Union speech back in, I want to say it was February 2019, he publicly said that when Venezuela has Juan Guaido become the president, ousting Maduro, that country is going to come back to prominence. Well, he was giving us a calm yeah. for what's happening nearly five years later, right? What's going to come? Um, we need to clear up this Zim bonds and the Zim currency because <laughs> right. some of the other countries that we're talking about, and the whole concept of this of this interview is to educate people about why it would be a good idea to hold on to some of this because our mission here is to break this poverty cycle. So you're not getting up in the morning, doing a job that you hate, you know, struggling to pay the bills, not turning the heating on because right. you're concerned at the end of the month how much it's going to be. So we're trying to give you tips and, and clues to about what would be a good idea on a low portion of whatever you can afford. We're not, I haven't got hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, in containers full of this. I've got a moderate <laughs> amount of all of these currencies. And they're sitting in a safe place. And I know you have, John. And I can tell you that everybody in this industry, what we do, broadcasting like this, all have them. We all have them. So I don't know anybody that's publicly broadcasting and talking about this stuff that doesn't have a little stash of foreign cash. It's quite a nice one, that. I should make a T-shirt. Get a little stash of foreign cash. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the biggest confusing one is the Zim bonds. So again, for the audience, John, let's go back and strip this apart and explain it on a layman's terms so people understand what they are. Sure. Well, I mean, it's pretty simple, really, in its essence. It the government is allowing under corruption the, the citizens there or the residents to have Zim dollars, right? They took the bonds out of circulation, I believe it was in late 2008, early 2009. So people just assume that they're out of circulation and not going to happen. But if you think about it, it's a lot like what's happening with Iran. They have the Rial or the Toman, as it's, I believe, now known. Um, at some point, those are going to come back in once our sanctions in the U.S. deep state are removed off of them. I give you a hint, it has something to do with the explosion we just talked about from Israel is probably going to precipitate them running into the arms of the U.S. and freeing up the sanctions. So yeah. again, historic replication. Um, similarly, in Zimbabwe, once again, Chamisa comes back in, he's going to collateralize both the bonds and the dollars in gold. So they will, they will come back into prominence. Um, the basic difference between a currency and a bond is that you know, a currency is backed by, <laughs> I always laugh, the good faith and credit of the government, which is an oxymoron, right? But a bond is a promissory note. It's a promise to pay. So possession, as they say, is nine cents of a law. So whoever's holding it is holding the true value of that bond at a one-to-one -one level. It, it's wholeness. People want to argue, and I'm not going to fight with them about it because they, you know, listening to a lot of people give them disinformation about, oh, it's only going to be 33 cents on the dollar or, you know, 85% of it's going to some humanitarian project. That's just not the case. I'm sorry, but people have gotten inculcated with a mindset, back to what you were saying about mindset, that they can only have so much. 
Why yeah. are you allowing man or people to dictate your freedom that comes from God? You don't need a humanitarian project. You are your own project. God has given you that freedom to exercise your free will thereof. Similarly, the bonds are whoever has it, owns it, has free reign to it, not chopped up in percentages, but in wholeness. The only question is, are you going to be patient and tactile and see it through? Or are you going to be impulsive and be emotional? There's as hard as it is, you have to be more grounded in calmness and logic than emotions because none of us have been here before. I'm not unsympathetic like you to the fact that people are struggling and some people don't have the resources to get you know, anything. But as I've said before, um, there are ways to do it. You can barter and things like that for talents that you have, friends that you know that have these currencies in larger amounts that maybe they can part with it for a skill set that you have. You really have to decide if you're gonna be part of the solution or part of the problem. And ultimately that comes back to mindset. You know, yeah. can you actually contend for this level of wealth? Because again, some people can and some people can't. And that's a subjective thing. But Zimbabwe, the point is Zimbabwe absolutely has the wealth. It's not like they're handing you, you know, trillions in physical, you know, money. It's all digital. This yeah. whole system, David, is going to a new digital economic reality backed by assets. And I know some people are concerned about, I want to touch on this. Some people, oh, digital is part of the beast system. At some point it will be, but for a finite period of time, God's people have the opportunity to get that wealth, buy land, buy metals, buy you know seeds, weapons, what have you, physical things of value to get away from that. There is a grace period. So it's not all bad right out of the gate where God is very merciful. He's going to give his people time you know, to move out of this. Yeah. And then the final point about Zimbabwe and just in general is as Putin, as the BRICS nations are de-dollarizing, including Iraq, in Zimbabwe, for that matter, um, they are going to do a huge dollar dump, which is going to send those U.S. dollars back stateside, and people are going to think, oh, great, it's just going to be like the 70s again, right? Oh, you know, my my house is worth this, I, make, I have more dollars. It sounds nice, but then hyperinflation kicks in, and it's going to be formidable, let's put it yeah. that way, diplomatically. Go ahead. Let's clear up a couple of those points, because you sure. veer off. Well, you actually didn't on that one. You just a lot of information in a short period of time. So what happened, folks, is in 2008, the Zimbabwe government printed very large denominational notes. They're called the double A series notes. And they're at $100 trillion and there's $50 trillion and it goes all the way back down. But right. they made a mistake because these were bonds. This is I promise to pay the bearer, the bearer on demand. So these should never have really gone into circulation. But the government at the time did it because... Even to this day, if you check out how much a Zimbabwe current um, currency dollar is worth to one US dollar, for example, um, these are not the same as these specific bond notes that we're talking about. So that's what happened. They were in short circulation, uh, in circulation for a short amount of time. And you got to think about Zimbabwe like an iceberg. And you can see the top of the iceberg. But underneath it, it's a huge mountain. And that's exactly the wealth mm. that, that is there right now. So the top of the iceberg is what they're publicly talking about. But these countries have deliberately kept their people in poverty because all of the wealth has been stripped away by the cabal. And they always put in a dictator or a puppet president that they control. And what happens when he moves out? When the next president comes in, he opens the till in the shop. And there's no money in the till. The same in every dictatorial country, every country that has oil, it's always been the same. There's no money left. Oh, amazing new uh, president. He's just getting in. Let's take a country like um, Sudan or Chad or any of these African places. You know, the president lasts four years. He's influenced by a larger um, bad, big bad brother, which would be France or Portugal or the US or the UK. And then they put him into power for four years. He gets wealthy. All his money's transferred into a Swiss bank account. And then he steps down and lets somebody else in. And it's what they do all the time. So Zimbabwe, wealth iceberg, and the specific notes we're talking about are the double A series. But you'll get all that information from, um, from the experts. We're just telling you what we know. Now, the other thing about that, John, is there's a lot of rumors now, the rumors are always flying around saying, OK, well, this can't happen and that can't happen. Why are we going to do this? 
So you got to dispel these rumors. For example, you touched on it there about um, God's people being given the opportunity to climb out of this life of slavery and imprisonment and go into a job that they hate. And at the end of the month, having nothing left. I mean, I've seen some, when I was in Honduras, my neighbor was shooting at people with a shotgun for taking bananas off his tree because he needed them. That's, I mean, that's how, that's just one example off the top of my head. Yeah, taking bananas from a tree. So the rumors about how you have to apply this, for example, when the RV, which stands for global revaluation happens and we get the notification about Iraq, and we get the notification about the Vietnam and we get the notification about the Zim bonds. There's been a lot of rumors about how you can actually reclaim this so you can exchange. When we talk about the word exchange, that means, OK, so I've got I've got some Vietnamese dong and I'd like to exchange it at the new rate. Now, the rumors about the Zimbabwe bonds were that you had to have a humanitarian project or they wouldn't fund you. Now, John, you're, you're, you're very negative about that idea. I don't know if that's the the way things are going or not, because we were always told that you would have an appointment, you go into a secure center, and then they'd give you, you know, you get your passport, you get the details and they check out who you are, and then they start negotiating. So, okay, you've got um, a $100 trillion uh, Zimbabwe bond. We're going to negotiate with you um, because we want to buy it and you want to sell it. But that's not what you're saying. You feel... And the information that you've retained is that you're going to have a lot more varied choices than this. You're not going to be manipulated or you're not going to be put into an appointment situation where you're, you're you know, sitting again against six sharks like on um, the TV show when you're pitching your money and they're saying, well, you know, it sounds interesting, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So tell us something about the exchange when this does happen, John. What the rumors have told us is not necessarily what you feel and what you've been informed of is going to be the process. Well, the reason that, thank you. The reason I don't feel that way, and it isn't even so much about how I feel that matters. It's what I've experienced. I've talked to, I've had the opportunity afforded to me to talk to fairly high level wealth managers and private bankers at Wells Fargo, where I'm choosing to do the exchange, uh, who have been willing to share with me in a certain amount of confidence that yes, they are taking the currencies. Yes, they are going to take the Zim bonds. Um, they'll have a separate, as I understand it, a separate division for that than the currency, because obviously there's a delineation between the two. Which, um, let, let's, let's remind the audience, Wells Fargo have now restructured a lot of their buildings and premises across the USA to accommodate these private meeting rooms where you can discuss this new wealth. And Correct. a lot of people have been sending photographs. I know you've experienced that yourself, John. So Wells Fargo mm -hmm. are getting ready for this. I just wanted to remind. Sorry, buddy, jump in. Off you go. No, oh, no, that's fine. That's good, 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 uh, good addition. Remind you remember the pictures I share with you back in yeah, the summer. Absolutely. So they've been preparing for this for quite some time, years, as, as it turns out. Um, and they've all said, no, we're we're going to take that those currencies and the bonds for you and and do it. And you know, I said, do you have an idea of you know, because I, I don't get into people that know me. No, I don't do dates and rates. I do puzzle pieces and timelines to help people critically think and draw their own conclusions. But, you know, sometimes you try to press your luck a little bit. And I said, you know, do you have an idea what the rates are going to be there? So we're not privy to that yet, but um, that will all be divulged to us at the proper time. So I said, so it's just a simple exchange. They're like, yeah, you just come and exchange. I'm like, do I need to sign an NDA? They're like, not that we're aware. And I, I NDAs are a trap. I'm telling you, you don't need to sign. I don't care what other people are saying. You don't need to sign an NDA. It's not in your best interest to do it. And I'll tell you why, mate, because what's to keep, whether it's, you know, whether you believe in a bank or a redemption center, um, I'm on the bank side of it. Not that I'm a fan of banks or anything like that. I don't work for the banks. You know, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just yeah. saying, I've, I always put those disclaimers out because people try to nitpick little things. Um I'm just telling you what I've experienced and observed in 11 years of doing this every day, day in and day out, as you know, being wholly committed to helping God's people, the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the righteous or the just, as the, as the Bible says. Um, you know, when I talk to them, they, they've made it clear that it's just straightforward. But what is to keep uh, the person signing the agreement with you, right, whatever your ethos belief system might be, uh, to saying, you know, hey, don't talk about this on social media. And you say, fine. And you're an honorable person and you keep your word. 
But now they have a binding NDA, right? Which is a contract, basically. And they can say, hey, we saw you on social media post about this after we agreed. And you know, I didn't do that. And you, maybe you didn't, you probably didn't, but now it's your word against theirs. And now they go to court. You know that court system, while it's being changed, granted, it's still yeah. currently corrupt. Who's the judge going to side with, your word or a document? It yeah. won't bode well for you. So just don't put yourself in a position you don't have to be in. This It wasn't complicated to buy, David. It's not complicated to sell. People make things complicated that really aren't. That's the problem. I would imagine the way this would work, and this is a logic. We talked about this, you said, in, in a digital form. So I, I need to elaborate on this. You, you walk into Wells Fargo, and if you don't have an account with them, you say, well, I'm interested in exchanging this foreign currency. And they're going to say, oh, fantastic, because you'll be walking in with notes, but they'll be opening an account and depositing that is exactly like your own account. Now, most of us do digital transactions all day long. Right. Paying for gasoline with your iPhone, so easy these days, you know. I'm a, I still use cash. I'm a big believer in cash as well. But the convenience yeah. of just doing that and not having to carry it and think about it, a transaction, and it can be as simple as using as buying an airline ticket online. That's a digital transaction. Mm -hmm. So as you walk into these exchange banks, um, they'll say, "Great, we'll open an account for you. This is the amount." Um, it's going to be deposited in your checking account, your savings account, your business account, your uh, whatever account you decide. And of course, if you want to remove some of the cash and walk out the door with it, as long as they have it there, I don't see them being a problem. Right. Um, that's what we've been told. This is what we're hearing. That's the system. Before, it was a whole big thing where you had to go in with a large folder, presenting graphs and, and pie charts and PowerPoint presentations about your money. Again, I don't know. I'm only following what I've been um, listening to. And this is in conversations with with intelligent, articulate people like yourself, John. <laughs> I appreciate the I appreciate the inclusion. But I mean, David, most people have never written a business plan, let alone read one. So yeah. to expect the I'm talking about the average person to, you know, who's got their own intelligence and their own respective experiential fields, to expect them to write a full-fledged business plan when it's your money to begin with. You don't need permission to have your money that comes from God, not man. So it's, it's, again, it's, it's really simple. It's not going to be complicated. And my personal recommendation, what I'm going to do is just, you know, I have, like you said, different currencies and different denominations. Just take one note. You're trying to build a relationship. You might not like that person up the, up right out of the gate. You might, but you don't know till you get there. So just take it a step at a time, bring one note, see if you like them. You ask to see the back screen rates. If you feel discern mentally that that's good for you, then trust that. Um, you don't need to bring an army of attorneys and bodyguards and all that kind of stuff. I mean, just, you know, use common sense, you know, go in discreetly. Don't make a target of yourself. These are things that are basic principles, you know, yeah, and don't, then don't be intimidated but, by it. You know, it's at the end of the day. I mean, I, I changed thousands over the years. I mean, of foreign currencies, you know, you used to have impurity changes at the airport. You come exactly. back, you need some money You're going on vacation. It's right. it's seems to be obviously in a more elaborate and professional way because Wells Fargo have been transforming their branches, as we just said, into private yeah. meeting rooms and they're training their staff. We know this to be true because the staff have confirmed it. They're yeah. training their staff to accommodate and understand how all of this new system is going to work. John, we need to talk about Vietnam a little bit as well because let's not leave them out. And incidentally, I probably I haven't told you, I, I'll be in Vietnam in January. I'm going. I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam on a filming uh, for okay. a month. I'll be away. So I'm excited about Vietnam because I'm. you don't really hear too much about it, you know. Again, another country that America had a little skirmish with back in the 70s. Um, so what were they after? What were the Americans really doing in there? Do you really think they went all the way to Vietnam to fight communism? What were they really after? We'll discuss mm -hmm. it now. John, off you go, bud. Well, thanks for that easy softball there. I appreciate ah. that. <laughs> Um, people, again, people that know me know that's one of my favorite currencies. I have the most amount of it. It's one of my favorite ones because there's a sleeper one. So yeah. as you said, starting on a, uh, for those who don't know about it, or maybe have heard cursory things, Vietnam is fascinating because if you took in practical terms, a thousand us or a thousand euro to buy dinar versus a thousand us or euro to buy dong, you'll get a much better spread for your value on the dong than you will the dinar. So you can get more of it. 
And when that goes up in value, which it will we'll touch on a second, um, you're going to get more um, profitability, we'll say, than, mm -hmm. than the dinar. Because I believe that um, when all the currencies go digitally backed in assets, they're going to have to be level to each other. They're going to have to be very close. You can't have this parity spread. They have to be closer in proximity to one another. So um, Vietnam is, is mostly known, I think, for their manufacturing. They have roughly 60 to 70% of China's manufacturing base migrated over to Vietnam, the microchips, your Samsung computers, your Samsung flat screens, you know, et cetera, et cetera, clothing. Then there's another product I'm going to show you in a minute that most people don't know about. So a little tidbit just for your followers, which is pretty cool. So, but what people don't know is that they have a lot of Brent, uh, pure uh, Brent oil, crude oil in their uh, Bering Straits in Vietnam. China and the U.S. were after that for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Back in 2020, during the pandemic, uh, President Trump and Mike Pompeo uh, very um, secretively or very uh, under the cloak and dagger of things, as they had to, did what was called an Indo-Asia Pacific Summit, where they invested nearly a, a trillion Fed dollars, which did two things. One, it kills the dollar which was part of the plan, and two, it invests heavily in the infrastructure and the financial well-being of Vietnam. Why? Because the Dong. So what people need to watch for is China-Taiwan, because that conflict, which is, I think, going to be much like the Gulf War in terms of how you know scripted it's going to be, uh, that's going to break Vietnam enough out of communism to break that Dong out in silver. Vietnam yeah. has a tremendous amount of silver, which many people, and I'm in that camp, is more valuable than gold for the purposes of manufacturing, which, as we just discussed, suits Vietnam ideally. So you're going to have Vietnam, their manufacturing, they're, they're, at the last I checked, they were about 34% GDP year over year since 2010. They're far and away one of the yeah. strongest economic countries in the world. You're going to find that out when you go over there. But I'm going to give you a wild card that most people don't know about. Okay, so we talk about you know silver, we talk about the oil, manufacturing, all of that, all valid. But we talked earlier in the show about assets in the ground, right? Yeah. What's the, what's an asset that they produce, David, that most people have no idea they produce? Let me guess, roba? Nope. Coffee? Getting closer. You're getting closer. Something else, so it's an agriculture. Soy? Nope. No, I give up, we could go on all night. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this or not. I'll try to put it up. Cinnamon. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah Indonesia. Yeah, nice. Indonesia, the rupiah. So I know people are going to ask about that. So I, no matter what currency I say, like, what about this? What about this? They're trying to nitpick. Indonesia's, Indonesia and Vietnam comprise roughly, I looked it up the other day, almost 60% of the world's cinnamon supply. So everybody uses it. Everybody loves it. This is Trader Joe's. I asked the manager where they get their cinnamon from. They said, well, from the headquarters, I said, "No, I mean, what's your <laughs> importer?" Like they said, "Yeah, it's Vietnam." And when I was at Sprouts, which is a slightly cheaper version of Whole Foods, the Home Mortgage. Um, it says right on the package, "Made in Vietnam." So I've seen this time and time again. I I, I have a couple of funny stories. Ago. I got banned, and uh, there's a bar on the Empire State Building called Hula Hands underneath it might not be mm -hmm. there anymore but it was always the point where we'd meet before most people had mobile phones and cell phones i sure. don't like cinnamon i can't stand it and you put it on everything in america you got cinnamon yeah. sugar, <laughs> cereal you, you have to say no Coffee. cinnamon you know yeah. i can't order carrot cake because it's loaded with cinnamon so i ordered sure. a cappuccino and hula hands and the guy put all the cinnamon on it. I thought it was cocoa powder. And, I, oh, and then i said that isn't a cappuccino <laughs> i said do you think the italians have a cappuccino with cinnamon on it out that's it don't come back <laughs> but it's true i mean america must consume oh i would imagine hundreds of thousands of kilos of that a year because the amount of the, in the food manufacturing alone it's very healthy for you it's it's a great spice to get in your system well it's a great remedy for diabetes a lot yeah. of doctors healthy holistic doctors prescribe it um yeah i mean whether you love or hate cinnamon is inconsequential although that's yeah, a funny yeah. story but yeah, every but but they, but it's an acid in the ground that they make that nobody talks about and so that's the level when you're when you're really wholly committed to this blessing and understanding all the facets of it, like we touched on in the beginning, you start digging, you start realizing, wow, this is much more uh, detailed and involved than I originally realized. It's not just about the metals or even the oil. It goes much deeper than that. And yeah, so Vietnam is, is going to be a huge tour de force in 
uh, in the, the financial economic community right after, I believe right after Iraq, they're gonna go next. And I'm looking for that China-Taiwan invasion, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Um, the, and China needs to watch out for um, Taiwan. The Taiwanese are very tactile and strategic. They have a lot of landmines over there. They're they're anticipating this, so they're not going to go gently into that good night. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a swift one. That I think it'll be a very swift conference. Yeah. The I overall agree. whole plan of this, again, I, I always think about if I was a member of the audience listening to this, I'd be like, oh, I've got to watch that part again. The overall giant plan all ties in. To, I know you're a very godly man. We often talk about that. Be. But this is God's plan. You know, it's time for liberation. It's time for freedom. You you don't well, you, you might sit be sitting there thinking, well, my life's all not so bad. But think about it. If you had enough money to be not concerned about going to work, what would you do? You 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 didn't you'd indulge yourself in things that you like, whether it's art or music or painting or travel or spending more time with your grandkids or your kids itself. We're all manipulated by construct constructive roles. We've got to go to work. You got to do this. You got to pay your bills, and it takes up all of our lives. And then again, we can get into things in the health industry. We just talked about how good cinnamon is for you, but a lot of the food that's being processed, which people on a low income are forced to buy, because yeah. they'll go to somewhere like Walmart and say, "Oh, this is great," or Costco. Say, so look, I can buy all of these fish for five dollars. This will feed us for a month. But when you look at where the fish and how it's produced, it's it's fed with a food that is toxic, and the fish is toxic. Mm -hmm. Tilapia is one of these Very fish. They, they develop a lot of that in Asia, and um, it's a toxic, toxic fish. You shouldn't eat it. But this is God's plan to free. When John talks about God's people, we're talking about people that follow God, that believe in God. We're talking about it's not distinctive to a particular, um, you know, you don't have like, you, people might be mixing that up with is the Israel because in the Bible it said the Israel God's chosen people. No, we're talking about the good guys, the good guys, the ones that follow the right path are going to be rewarded. And this is going to open up all of this. So if you feel like you're going to miss out on it because you're not in in the special club and you don't have a load of gold, you don't have a load of silver that you're sitting on. These are the great things about these currencies, because. We've explained why these countries are going to revalue and the currencies we talked about are going to be worth substantially more. But the mm -hmm. great thing about this, John, is what I like. This is why I'm doing these shows is that people can get into this investment for very little money. And right. it's not like the stock market where you say, OK, I'll buy a couple of shares in Apple and you don't really have them. The money market that we're talking about, this currency, you actually get it in your hand. You keep it. It's in your house. It's in your safe. It's under the mattress, wherever you keep it. And that's it. That's the beauty of it. It's not a virtual reality investment. It's a real solid investment. And you can do even I know people that just buy 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there, you know, yeah. whatever they can get, whatever you can afford to, to grab hold of, do it. Well, I was talking about people in my circle community, what, what have you. Uh, it's the loaves and the fishes, right? What did Jesus yeah. do? He took a little and multiplied it. So to the people who feel like, oh, I don't have the money or do this or that, you don't need a lot. You just, you know, whatever skin you can get in the game will be multiplied. You'll get your chance. And then there's, you know, godly people, like you said, who will have an abundance, who will share it. It's not, that's a mindset thing. Thinking in lack, we need to think in abundance. I understand the world we've come in. I'm not exactly a billionaire yet myself, but but you you have to embrace the new and not let fear overtake that. It's faith over fear. And there's the old saying, if you have a, a faith of a mustard seed, I can't do it that small, but if you have faith of a mustard seed, um, you can you can speak to that mountain. It will move, you know, metaphorically, but also if you have faith of a little thing, God will multiply it. And so there's going to be other believers and people who are going to step up. And, and help you out who are going to feed the poor, the lonely, the sick, the needy, as Kim Clement rightly said, all those years ago. Uh, David, I just got an update here. That this illustrates how fast the world is changing and the news changes on a cycle. As we're talking, <laughs> just got breaking, breaking news. Saudi Prince Talal bin Abdulaziz bin Bandar al-Saudi has died. Oh, shit, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I just came out minutes ago. So that's that's going to be because there's a lot of people all waiting in, in line there. So the next one is going to step up. Um, 
that would be well, a very interesting situation. Trump yeah. would probably attend that as well. He was was he pals with that one? I forget which one it is, but any of those Saudi royals have got so much swing and power. Well, Let's last week where you, that goes. Sorry, like, yeah, absolutely. Last week you had Henry Henry Kissinger, who I talked to my audience about, was the godfather of petrodollar, who forced yeah. Nixon to do what he ultimately did as the figurehead. You had Sandra Day O'Connor. Um, you have this one. You had uh, uh, Jimmy Carter's wife, Rosalind. Jimmy Carter's waiting in the wings. You know, who comes after Jimmy Carter? Biden. Yeah. So you start to see it proliferate downward. Actually, this 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 death of this Saudi prince could mean if he was the head honcho that was um, that had handshake and agreements and word is my bond agreements to do all the business in um, in U.S. petrodollars. I don't know this. This has just occurred to me as this is happening. That could be a very good thing because they can say, well, your agreement was with him and he's right. gone. Correct. So again, this is probably a blessing in disguise. And Absolutely. I would imagine it's going to, it's going to have quite big re reflections down through all of their, their business transactions now, because Saudi, you know how much oil they have. Fascinating. Well, That's another, what's happening right now. It's, a, it's another closing of the door of the petro dollar into the petro you won, getting away yeah. from the system. It's another death nail in the coffin. It's a closure of things of the old world. I guarantee folks, I guarantee John's going to be texting me like up to about three or four in the morning for me now. As that story <laughs> gets about what's really going on. Well, guys, I think we've come to the top of the hour and we don't like to go on too long because we lose people's attention. And right. it's also um, about the right time, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour. That's enough. If you need any more information, we're going to provide some links um, below. And we'll be back, I suppose, in another few weeks to answer more questions about it. But my closing statement, John, would be I like these currencies because you can get into it on a very, very low amount. You don't have to invest hundreds of thousands or even thousands. Invest what you're comfortable with. Invest what you you uh, you can afford. Um, and also, I like the fact that I've got it in my hand. It's there. You know, actually, no, I can't tell you that. I was going to tell you what <laughs> I actually take some of mine I take with me when I travel just mm. in case it kicks off because we, we are expecting it imminently. So it'd be very nice um, if it happened when I was in one of those countries. Imagine if Vietnam uh, revalues, I'm actually there watching it all. I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> it, ha but, it happened. It happened. Yeah, it's it's not an impossibility. I like the currencies because it gives it gives hope to the average Joe in the street because – you know, if you're not sitting in a hundred thousand dollar Jaguar Mercedes and you're thinking, how can I ever get to that level? This is an ideal opportunity to come in on on a penny, penny on the dollars, as they would say. And um, the, the information and links below of how to get them. Um, we have provided that with a, a band that we trust, a group that we trust. And we have already know that people are getting these delivered on an international um, registered envelope. You do literally get them in your hands. So don't be intimidated. Don't have fear about, okay, how am I going to get this? You know, I'd, I would like a little bit. And then we'll put some more information together for next month. We'll come back after Christmas, update you with some other um, more intel. Maybe we'll talk about a few new countries that we, you also like, John, next next episode, no? Sure. Sounds we great. What would you to like it. to say before we hit the bye-bye button? Um, well, I just want to say to everybody, you know, hang in there. If you've made it this far, give yourself a little, take a breath, give yourself a pat on the back. You made it this far and God will take you the rest of the way. Continue to put your trust in him and you will see just how that will be rewarded. Um, I want to wish everyone Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the coming up tomorrow on Hanukkah. So to the, to the, to the true Jews in Israel that America is a descendant of, I want to wish happy Hanukkah to them over the next week or so. And just, you know, spend time with your friends, your family during this holiday season. Uh, reflect on the fact that you survived this year, which many did not. Uh, yeah. and, and, um, and just have faith for the future that uh, when we turn the page, I think you're going to be very, very encouraged and appreciative of where we end up going. And obviously this wealth, the, the whole idea is to share it. So if your friends and family didn't believe in it or if they missed the information, missed the memo, don't worry, you'll still be able to help them. You'll still have enough funding to reach out your arm and help them as well. Because even if a very, and we know this, a very small um, part of the population actually knows what we're talking about, but fund these people with the hearts that they have, the hearts of lions, 
and they'll this will spread like throwing a stone into a pond the wealth and the improvement of lives misery and and poverty is the way that's going to change the world is going to be a spectacular and you're sitting in the front line seats to watch it folks so we'll be back happy christmas uh happy hanukkah whatever you're doing and john i'll be talking to you by text and what no doubt later and we'll see you in a couple of weeks we'll come back in the new year for an, another update folks i hope you enjoyed it if you need any more information all the links are below we've provided them there for you and john thank you very much buddy we'll speak later on and thanks, thanks for joining me. us i hope you found this informative and you can pull out all of the information you want and be able to make a decision that you're comfortable with. Thanks a lot. Take care.